Ali Tombanja, Wam Lela Hurukanda, Mugwenda, Mugwenda, Humala Kari Hassanian, Uteperian to Kuperian to Kunavis, wherever you preach the kingdom, things will happen. So it doesn't matter you are deacon, you are elder, you are a member of church, you are not a, don't have title. When you preach the kingdom of God, things will happen. Father God, I stretch my hand to heaven to worship you. And uh, we are going to be learning about uh, obedience, obedience, prosperity that comes through obedience, prosperity that comes through obedience. I will start by reading uh, what our father asks. You know, our father is a great teacher. In him, there are all the fivefold ministries. He is a teacher. He is a great apostle. And uh, one of the marks of being a best or a great teacher is being able to teach through questions. Our father says, if you want to be a good teacher, you teach through questions. So he starts by saying, there is a question that people ask all the time about paying tithes. A woman said, should I pay tithes if my husband does not want me to? Another lady asked a question, can I give offerings when my husband disagrees. These are very interesting statements. He says, a woman said, should I pay tithes if my husband does not want me to? He goes on to say, another lady asked a question, can I give offerings when my husband disagrees? Now, for the benefit of some, we want to start by defining a tithe. A tithe is one-tenth of our income, and it belongs to God. So whatever income that you get, there is 90% which belongs to you, and there is 10% that belongs to the Lord. And we shall start by reading Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Leviticus 27, verse 30. The Bible says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, it is holy to the Lord. So a tenth of every income that you and I get, it belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. You know, the tithe system, it existed before the Mosaic law. It existed during the Mosaic law and after. Amen. So when you decide to do good, you know what? God will see that you are obedient. And we are saying there is prosperity that comes through obedience. Hallelujah. So tithe is God's money. The 10% of my income belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. We all, we all know of Malachi chapter 3, which says, Bring ye all the tithe unto the storehouse. The storehouse that is being talked about there is the house that you get your spirit to be fed. That's the storehouse, whereby it's storing all the spiritual aspects that you, your spirit needs. Hallelujah. So let's go back to our father. Let's answer as he answers. He says, Everything, marriage, family, the first thing is God. The first thing is God. The first thing, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. So our father says, we don't begin with wives. We don't begin with husbands. Uh, let me add something there. We don't begin with rent. Mm -hmm. We don't begin with the groceries. Everything beginning the first thing is God. Our father says, we begin with God. If so, then that means everything starts with what God says. 
Brigi. <laughs> All the tithe unto my storehouse. So that means that if I want God to bless me, I need to be obedient and faithful to what he says. Everything, if I get any amount, the first thing is not to start thinking of buying makeup. Ah, come on, somebody. The first thing is to start thinking of God. Have I removed what is not mine? That's the first thing. Have I removed what is not mine? But most of us, some of us, you know, what happens is we start with everything. I remove my rent. I remove my what, what. I remove my transport. I remove my touch and go. And then we discover that perhaps at the end of the day, the amount that has remained is not even equivalent to a tenth. And then I will say, ah, no. I, 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 I will give. Eight uh, percent is okay. I've tried. God knows that I've tried. I want you to know that even if it's 9.999, it is not a tenth. So technically, you have robbed God. Now there's a difference between a robber and a thief. A thief comes silently through the night, perhaps tiptoeing, and they take something without you knowing. Now a robber can come even in broad daylight. And a robber usually comes with force. Mm, come on, somebody. They come with the force. So if the Bible is saying, God is saying, you are robbing me. That means we are doing it by force to say, God, I'm not giving you back. I know it's yours, but I'm not giving you back. Just imagine you have given someone something and they now come to you and they tell you, I'm not going to give you back. I want you to imagine how you feel. Hallelujah. Our father was going to say, as children of God, we all desire to prosper financially. Is that not true? Can I get an amen? amen? There is nothing wrong with this desire. But it comes with a special requirement called obedience. A special requirement which is called obedience. Hallelujah. So there are some of us who are not obedient in this area of tithing. Which is very, very important. That is the reason why you find that things are not going on well. My finances are just found lacking. Why? Because they are not protected by God. Mm. Can I say this statement? When I pay my tithe, I have put a security wall around my finances. So that God protects it from being stolen by the devourer, who is the, 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 the devil. At one time, uh, some in Australia, there was, he was testifying, uh, who was saying that, I thank God. Ah, because I worked very, very hard. You know, these past weeks I was working. You know, that shift, those shifts. And I managed to get uh, over 25,000. Oh, I thank God. And you know what happened? After I received that money, there was, uh, I got a phone call, and there was a big funeral at home. And exactly it was 25. So I want to thank God. Another time, they started to stay another instance whereby they also got money. And something came up and all that money went there. Until the pastor said, no, 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 no. no. This is not something that you need to thank God for. You should be angry at the devil who is stealing your finances. So, as children of God, our desire, we should want to desire to prosper. Our father goes on to say, Obedience to tithes does not do anyone a tremendous favor other than yourself. Don't think that if I, not, if I don't give my tithe this month, oh, the church is going to suffer. I want to tell you something. The church was there before you even came there. You found the church running. This church started 1960, before all of us here were born. Oh, come on, somebody. So it was running. So don't think that if you don't pay, you are doing the church a favor. You are just doing yourself harm. Hallelujah. So we are saying tithe, number one, it is God's man. And number two, tithe is holy. I can imagine someone who eats holy things. Woo! A tenth belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't eat God's man. Tell your neighbor, say, don't eat God's man. Tell your neighbor, say, don't eat God's man. 
Now, there are some, uh, some believers, you know what they do? They do what is called a tithe for the church. And there are others who have what is called the tithe for God. Now, let me explain what is called the tithe for the church. Now, that tithe for the church, uh, which is tithe to register on the form so that the secretary writes that you've paid your tithes to get a receipt. Ah, you Perhaps you're a leader. So that they don't come to me and say you're not paying tithes. Tithes for the church to just register. But deep down, you know it is not a tenth. Mm, today I know I'm going to be stepping on some tomatoes, some gardens of some people. Please don't mind me. I'm just passing through. So, we don't want members who do not pay tithes. A tithe belongs to the Lord. You are doing yourself harm if you don't pay what belongs to the Lord. We said a tithe is a tenth. We started by reading a question. Because we know most of us, they start asking, so should I remove or gross net? Should I start by paying this or that? Our father clearly said, we begin with God. So in everything I do, I need to give God his tenth. Let me give you a, a testimony. When I was a student some 12 years ago, in this land, uh, I used to receive uh, 300 US dollars. During those days, it was 300 times 3.15, which was amounting to around 900 and something ringgit. And I used to say, let me, because, you know, when you tell your parents, you tell them, I need so much for rent, I need so much for electricity, so much for water, so much for internet. And then they will say, okay, Afterwards, we are now giving you this much for your upkeep. Huh? Hello? Are we together? Now, I used to just take from my upkeep, which was now a little. I used to take my tithe from there. Perhaps it was around 300 ringgit. And then I would say, oh, so my tithe is 30 ringgit. Why? Because I started paying my rent, my bills, everything. Then on what is mine, I then say, ah. Oh, and then one great man of God, overseer Mzanamo, he came and he said, Son, if you want God to bless you, why can't you just begin with him and see what he does? So I said to myself, you know, as a mathematician, technically if I subtract from the whole lump sum, I have just subtracted more from my what? For my upkeep. So I began to give God, starting by God, 90 something. That's a tenth of 900. That means on my upkeep, I have deducted. <laughs> Are you getting it? Now, there was now a big difference between how I would now survive after I had paid the whole tithe and comparing with the days that I would just tithe my 300. There was a big difference. Because after tithing my 300, even crossing over until the next month, ooh, it was like I'm pushing something up over a mountain. It was a, a, a hard time. You would end up crossing over to the next month after you would be like, ah, you are tired of eating noodles. <laughs> but when I decided to say, let me just be obedient and see what happens. You know what would happen? Someone would just come and say, I want to bless you, 50 ringgit. Someone would just say, I, I, I just thought of you. I'm now in Zimbabwe. Uh, can you please send me your details? I want to send you $200. God said it to just provide, miraculously. Then I say to myself, even if I'm now getting all that money, I now need to tight it. Get 100 ringgit, I remove my tenth. I get 200 ringgit, I remove my tithe. Why? Because it is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. And I remember in Sarawak, I preached and I said, just be faithful. If you go hungry, I want you to come to me as your chairman and tell me that you are hungry. They were all coming to the pulpit testifying, saying, ever since I started tithing faithfully, God began to do this. God began to do that. Hallelujah. We are talking of obedience. 
tell your neighbor, say obedience. So we say tithe for the church. That tithe way by one, it has not tithe faithfully. They just want to get a receipt and register. I heard someone saying, I need to pay my tithe because I just need to pay something. Because, you know, end of November, you know, the elder said we check uh, a record to see if you are paying tithe so we can decide if you can be a tick or not. <laughs> it's not supposed to be about that. It is supposed to be about you and God being faithful, making sure that your finances are protected. Hallelujah. Those that give a tithe for God, they are those that are faithful. You know what happens? There are spirits that follow the bloodline. Ah, let me talk to some people. There are spirits that follow the bloodline that do not want you to prosper. Some spirits, they even boarded the same airplane with you. They came overseas. Some spirits. They don't want you to prosper. They want you to be always mingling, in, going round and round in poverty. Mm. You know, there's nothing being born poor. But there's something wrong if you die poor, especially in such a church with such a teaching. Uh, there's something wrong. Our father says, if you come here with one jacket, after a few months, God will bless you. So, I need to just start to be faithful with the little that I have. There are people who say, I, I think I, start, I need to be faithful when I start going, getting a salary, or perhaps 3,000. Then, I, I think that one is, is it's okay. If I get 3,000, then I'll start removing 300. I think that one is okay. But with my 100, ha ah, you know, I, 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 I was so happy one day when I, when I saw uh, uh, in the tithe re records of someone who gave a tithe of 50 cents. I was so happy when I was like, ha, huh, this is faithfulness. Because if it was you and I, we know ourselves, can we come and put a 50 cent coin in an envelope? You look at me, don't look down, look at me. Putting that 50 copy in an envelope and say, and write your name. Some of us will be like, ah, I'm so ashamed. 50, ah, look at me. But that person is saying, I am being faithful. I want God to bless the 90 that has remained. Hallelujah. So, God wants to bless you. And the devil wants you to eat God's money. This is the equation that is happening. God wants to bless you. The devil wants you to eat God's money. Because he knows when you chow it, ooh, you have missed the blessing. Tell your neighbor, say, don't chow God's money. So there are spirits that follow the bloodline. They want you to go back to square zero. I need to just trust God. Let's move on. When do we tithe? When do we tithe? When should we? Or when do we? Whenever you get money, you tithe. You don't have to wait to say this is, this is uh, the 18th, this is the 20th. I think I'm going to tithe on the, on the 28th or on a big Sunday. That's when I, whenever you get money, you bring to the storehouse and you tithe it. Hallelujah. There's a story is told in South Africa there. There was a man who was just faithful. Whenever he would get his tithe, he would come to church and give that tithe. And he started to see something. Whenever he would give it on Sunday, during that week, God would bless him and give you more. Come the other Sunday, you will bring it again. Before you know it, every week he was beginning to tithe. And his tithe was increasing. Well, mathematically, if your tithe is increasing, that means God is blessing you more. That, that, imagine that person, if they were just saying, ah, let me just put it in my pocket. I wait here for the big sand. Brother, if you wait, you are delaying yourself from what God wants to do. He wants to bless you. I know it's hitting, it's hitting, it's hitting, it's getting home. When you hear such silence, I know it's hitting. Hallelujah. So faithful people, they don't give God church tithe. <laughs> but they tithe faithfully. Amen and amen. So, don't look at your neighbor and say, ah, your neighbor says, ah, no, today it's Bible study. Ah, I should not tithe. I should tithe on Friday. You are losing out. <laughs> you are losing out. You are missing out. 
tithe whenever you get your amount. Give it to the Lord. Write your name. Write. Make sure that with the God, God, when he looks down, he should be, this is my beloved child. I am so happy. Why? Because you don't eat God's man. Amen and amen. So don't look at your neighbor and say, ah, I'm going to give and pay my tithes according to my neighbor. Your neighbor may be cheating God. Don't be in the same WhatsApp group. Hallelujah. Our father says, if leaders can give their finances faithfully, the church will run itself sufficiently. <laughs> He's not talking of just the leaders only. If the leaders of any assembly, they just tithe faithfully. Now, tithing faithfully means that if I give you ten ringgit, one ringgit is not yours. Yours is nine. Are you getting it? If I give you twenty ringgit, the two is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. It is holy. I was helping someone and they were saying that uh, I just want to give tithes when I receive an allowance from home or when I receive uh, 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 my salary. That's when I would give. If someone just blesses me with 500, 500 of, uh, for, for drink, uh, it's mine. Why should I tithe? 10% belongs to the Lord. Mm, let's go back Leviticus 27. Let's read it. And all the tithe of the land whether the seed of the land, the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. Woo! It is holy. Mm. Let me, let me, let, 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 let's talk about Malaysia. Let's read it again. And all the tithe from your allowance or from being blessed by people, it is the Lord's. It is holy. If my friend blesses me, I know that 10% is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. It is holy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Our father says, tithing suggests that God owns everything. Now when you don't tithe, you're saying, I know God. I think there is a boundary. This is mine. <laughs> this is mine. Tithing suggests that God owns everything. No one owns anything that is not firstly received from the Lord. Ooh. Therefore, in the laws of tithing, God is simply commanding his people to return to him a tenth part of what he has given you. You know what those people from your workplace, what they do? They remove tax. They remove EPF. They remove what, what? Because they don't trust you. Ah, let me say it again. That's why you find that they remove all those things before they give it to you. Why? Because they don't trust you with their money. It's theirs. Eh? Give to sister. They don't trust you. But God trusts you so much that he gives you and he says return. <laughs> he gives you and he says return. He just wants to see if you are obedient. I have given you my son. I want you to just return. But it will be like I have been given. You know, it's like a child. I remember the first days when my daughter was very young. I would buy a packet of chips. I give it to her. I open it for her. I say eat. As she is eating, when I want to dip my hand to just take one, she's like, ah, ah, no, it's mine. It's... Why? She's forgetting I'm the one who bought it. <laughs> In the first place, I could have just said no. Can I illustrate something? Just that hosting today, they didn't bring any water. I wanted to illustrate something. When you go to someone's house, they serve you water. They give you water in a water glass or tumbler, whatever it is. And imagine, this is the same people, people who don't tithe. God gives them something. You come to my house, I have given you water. You have taken yours. You are supposed to return the water glass, the tumbler to the owner. What do, do you do? You leave the house with the tumbler, water glass. That's what God is saying. You are robbing me because each time you come, I give you, you, you go out with two water glass. Next week, you come back. 
So the next time you want me to give you, says the Lord, what should I use to give you? You've taken all the water glass in the house. Ooh, this is something. Tell your neighbor, say, are you hearing this? The Bible clearly states that obedience leads to blessings. Our father says, true blessings are not always in money. Putting God first and your soul being connected to your spirit is a true blessing. It starts inside, then it reflects on the outside. Blessing is not always money. Good health is blessing. That's why you find that those that do not try the times you just find today, they've just gone to the doctor. They've left 20 ringgit there. They've just gone to the doctor. They've been prescribed tablets for 15 ringgit. They've just gone to the doctor. They've been... Something just happened. You, you wear your good... Uh, what is that called? Pulling socks. You are going outside. You wear your good high-heeled shoes. You are just going outside the, the hill. Why? There is no protection. If I choose to become faithful, God will begin to bless me. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. The book of Malachi is where we learn to be honest with our tithes. Chapter 3, verse 10. God says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse. It is where the windows of heavens will be opened for you. I'm reading Baba's book. He says, that means the doors of opportunity for jobs or business that will cause you to have blessings. Where, you know what it does? It opens some doors of opportunities, of jobs. Ooh, there are some people whom I've heard saying, I never applied for the job. They just gave it to me. They asked me, do you want, <laughs> do you, we, we think of creating a job portfolio for you. Are, are you interested? Blessing of the Lord. That's what a tithe does. Hallelujah. Baba says, but the first thing is to bring God his tithes and offerings into his storehouse. When you become obedient and faithful, he will also command blessings into your storehouse. The Bible says, see if I will, test me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. You know, I was explaining at one uh, conference and I was saying, this is my belief. Everyone has got a window in heaven right now. Huh? Now Luke 6, 30 says, give and it shall be given back to you. Huh? Are you getting it? Huh? Are you? Let's follow, let's follow. Give and it shall be given back to you. I come here, I give my offering. I come here, I give my offering. You know what happens? What I believe, God will command his angels. Go and return to Leon. A good measure pressed down, shaken together. The good, the angel perhaps carries a wheelbarrow. It's money, eh? A wheelbarrow of ringgits. They come on Leon's window. It's closed. Why? Tight is not opened that window. They just dump on top. They go. Leon is busy praying. Oh, God, I've given you. Why are you not giving me, giving me back? <laughs> Tomorrow you come back again. You give. God is faithful. He sends his angel. Go and give blessings. The angel comes with the wheelbarrow. They throw on the window. The window is what? It's closed. But the Bible is saying, test me in this and see if I will not open the floodgates. Oh, come on, somebody. In, in, in full. Have you ever seen, uh, 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 sometime I, I watched the Kariba dam in Zimbabwe being opened, uh, another floodgate being opened. You know, the water, how it, how, how it rushes through, that is one floodgate. It's something else with a mighty force. That is what I expect when I give my tithe to the Lord and God begins to bless me. I expect a floodgate like that. Hallelujah. So it is of paramount importance to be faithful. Baba says, tithes belong to God and it is God's money. When you don't give your tithes, you are not harming the church or the pastor, but you are harming yourself, for it is you who needs to protect your money from the devourer. The church has been there before you were there. Ooh, this is some powerful stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is very, very important to be obedient. It's good to be obedient, because prosperity comes through obedience. The Bible says it is better to be obedient not to sacrifice, to say, ah, no. 
oh, something is coming. There are people who take tithe money and they pledge it. And they say, I have given. Yeah, I'm talking to you now. My 10%, one match is big day. We want to have a big day. I don't have money to throw or to... to, to, to. <laughs> hey, direct translation. I don't have money. What should I do? I take from my tithe. Yeah, it's God's money. I just go and put... I just divert it. It's still good. You know, that money has got a specific purpose. We don't mix it with the other monies because it is holy. Ah, come on, somebody. It is holy. Tell your neighbor, say, it is holy. So it's very important to be obedient. God first. Yeah, how many are going to be saying from today, I am going to put God first? Just raise your hands. If you are like me, who are saying, from today, God first. It's very good to be obedient. It's very good. Ah, I know someone right now is saying, ah, we have heard of this message a long time ago. Yes. Rep repetition is good power. It makes you, because some of us, we, 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 we you know, there are, there, there, there are times whereby we are tempted to say, ah, today is just 200 ringgit. Ah, but God knows, sometimes I give a big wolf, big tithe. It, 20, ah, God will just forgive. You are making yourself lose or miss the blessing. Another scripture is coming. Do you know what the Bible says? It says, uh, 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 to him who knows what is right and does not do it, to him it's a sin. To him who knows how to do what is right and does not do it, it's a sin. Now what is a sin? Baba Gudi says, to sin is to miss the mark. To sin is to be found lacking on God's scale. Read that book, Do You Know Your God? It's written. To sin is to be found. So I should not be. And then I say to myself, I'm holy. I'm holy. I'm holy. You are eating holy time. Hallelujah. Ooh, let's clap hands for Jesus. Let's clap hands for Jesus for such a teaching. <laughs> let's move on to offerings. Let's move on to offerings. What is offering? An offering is money that we give over and above. What do we mean? Offering comes from a Latin word called offero, which means to contribute or to present for either acceptation or rejection. Uh, did you get that? Offering comes from the word offero, O double E, O double F E R O, a Latin word which means to contribute. To present for either exception or rejection. Elder, what are you talking about for either exception or rejection? God looks at the heart. Then he either accepts or he rejects. There are some people who say, I have been giving and nothing has changed in my life. The issue is, are you giving with the right motive or with the wrong motive? Oh, come on, somebody. Let us say, to give. We know that giving, offering, that box there is transparent. Mm -hmm. Am I giving with the right motive? Or am I giving to be seen by people? You know, one thing that I, that I realized, uh, when someone has got a one ringgit uh, a, a note, uh, I think I have a one ringgit note in my pocket. Let me demonstrate. Yeah, I think I have a one ringgit. You know, this one ringgit note, uh, in US dollars is equivalent to how much? 0 0.4. 0 0.4 cents, that's 40 cents. Okay, we know we can debate the whole night. <laughs> well, let's just assume we don't have money changers in here, so we all don't know. So, this is what I have. I'm giving to my God. God does not look at the value more importantly. He looks at the determination of the heart. Mm -hmm. So now, as I am giving this, this is what I have. This is all that I have. This is John. Now, here comes Peter. Peter has got more. Uh, he, in his pocket, there are hundreds. There are some two hundreds. I don't know if there's a two hundred. There are, there, there are some lump sum. And then he says, 
Ah, let me just give this one to God. So, according to God's scale, God looks at the heart. And now what I wanted to say is, now some people, they are ashamed of their money, their amount. Uh, I mean the finance. I know what, is, what it means. You find that it is like this. Not just like this, like this. Not just like this, like this one. Above all, it's like this. I'm going to give to the Lord. Uh, it's like you are being pushed. You are being forced. Or you are now doing it just because I am a leader, I am an elder, I am deacon. I need to do something. People are seeing me, so I just need to go and give. But now the amount that I have, I'm ashamed. And then they go, they even dip it inside until they are like they are about to reach the other amounts. How about you spare our guys from, you know, straightening it and just walk and be happy with what you are, you, you are giving God. And just come and just drop it and give it to God. This is what you have. Ah, come on, somebody. Let's read 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Let's read 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. What does it say? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Anyone? Who is there? 2 Corinthians 9, 8. I will read. And God is able to make all things, all grace abound to you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. In all things. I wanted verse 7. It says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Not like we are being forced or we are being pushed. But to be happy. To be happy with what you have. Ah, I myself, when I have this, this is what I have. I give. Now you find that when someone that day has got a 20 ringgit note or a, a 50 ringgit note, they hold it like it's, 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 it's something else. We are sowing a seed. We believe we will reap. Now, the Bible says you have already received your reward. You want to be seen. Remember, Jesus Christ was sitting at the offering box. He was seeing people coming to give their offering. And he saw a widow giving a mite. How we explained that day. And Jesus said, this woman has given the most. So you should know that when it comes to giving, on the scale of God, God talks of people who give the most and who don't give the most. Why? It's not about lump sum or about amount to God. So we are saying offering is either for acceptance or rejection. So I need to examine my heart. Hallelujah. I need to examine my heart to see if I am giving with the right motive. Because I want God to bless me. I want God to give a good measure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there are three types of givers. The first type of giver is called a sponge giver. Now, a sponge is someone who waits to be squeezed until they can release. They wait to, to be squeezed until how are they squeezed elder? When situations press them down, then they begin thinking of, ah, let me give God so he can bless me. You should not be a sponge type of a giver. To give just because a pressure has come. I know there are not going to be many amens here. Because some people are now seeing themselves that ah, I'm, 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 I'm sponge. Those are the people who give because they know that look, 6 30 says give and it shall be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall it be put unto my life? They say, mm -mm, I think now our ah, situation is tough. Back there, ah, I'm tired of noodles. Ah, they have been squeezed by pressure, by situation. We don't want people to give God out of a pressure. We want to give God because we love God. Ah, come on, somebody. Let's give God because we love God. The Bible says, for God so loved that he gave. Giving is pushed by love. 
Ah, come on, somebody. To, 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 to give it is because of love. I, I, I know you. Back in the day, you used to buy those teddy bears. They were very expensive. They were in the month of February. You know what I'm talking about. You used to buy that one, sacrificing your, 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 your own allowances. Why? Because it is out of love. <laughs> Pushed by love. Buying an expensive watch for some bad. <laughs> some, I, I know, I know. Forgive me, I don't know anything. If you bought someone a watch, don't, don't think I'm talking about it. <laughs> Just passing through. Okay, right, something is coming. There are people who actually value their stomach more than God. Those are the people who don't feel anything when they spend a hundred ringgit. Ah, when I see people laughing, I know I'm speaking to some people. They don't feel anything when they spend 80 ringgit, 100 ringgit at Nando's. It's like nothing. But now, that 80 ringgit to just think of just dropping it into the offering, giving it to God. Mm -mm, I need to give five. They even go downstairs, sweating. It's offering time. They start rushing downstairs to go and buy a bottle of water so that they get change. And they come, oh, come on, somebody. I should give God because I love God. God should be special to me. God should be something of more importance to my life. Amen. Not to say God is change. That's why one day when I was teaching about finances, I was saying you also need to budget your offering. To say in this month, how much am I going to be giving to God? I budget. It's not supposed to be like I open my wallet, then I see how much is in there. Ah, they still ring it. Ah, okay, they still ring it. Okay, this one is for train. Okay, let's open this zip of coins. How much? There's 20 cents. Ah, at least today there's no transparent box. Because if transparent box, it will Today there is that uh, velvet uh, uh, cloth item. I will just dip my hand in there. No one will know. I should give God because I value him so much. Some people, they even value their head more than God. They prioritize. I'm not saying don't look good. Looking good is good. But we are talking about priorities. Where are your priorities best? I prefer buying a very expensive perfume. Smelling good is nice. But where are my priorities lying on? Am I giving God because I love him? Or I am giving God because he is second choice? You know, a second choice, you don't mind. Whatever comes next. Now you don't mind. Second choice means that even if I'm sitting on the table eating, if a beggar comes, I will say, wait, I'm about to finish. Then I give my leftovers. These are some of the people who give leftovers to God. The God who has brought them this far. They have been busy here saying, Ebenezer, that's the Lord has brought us this far. But you are giving God second breadcrumbs. Today I need to change. Number two type of a giver, these are the flint type of givers. Hard rocks from sedimentary rocks. In Shona we say Ruare. On that sedimentary kind of a rock, even if you take a big pick or an iron object you want to dig, nothing comes out except sparks. Nothing. These are the some, some types of givers. They are not even porous. Even water just flows over. They can't even give someone to, to just say, I want to bless you with some water. Ah, uh, come on, somebody. They, uh, uh, you, you, you actually say, I bought you water for one drink, 20. Please, I need it back. Not pour us. When they visit you, you can't even cook anything for them. Even to say you drink juice. You can't. When you dilute it for them, you put it here and it's like colored water. Not pour us. Mm, today I'm preaching to somebody. I should be a giver. There are some people who are stingy to the point that when somebody comes, even they the prepared noodles. You know what noodles do when you leave them to become cold? They don't mind. They put it under the bed. Bed spread is closing over. They talk and the brother will be saying, ah, Ah, it's smelling nice in here. And they'll be like, ha, ha, hallelujah. You can't even share. 
Come on, somebody. We are in the year of the love of God. Breaking of bread. Fellowshipping together. Can I have this book? Can I have this book? I want to read something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't plan to read this one, but let me read it. Do you know your God? If you are a good leader, people come, page 33, people come and eat your food. Let me repeat. If you are a good leader, people come and eat your food. How many years have you been a leader? Has anyone come to eat your food? Okay, let's, let's substitute by eliminating water with the food. Has anybody even said, you know, some people say, ah, I'm about to go, I'm going. Offer them water. Or even that fruit, that orange, say, say, eat as you are going. Baba says, if God sends people to eat your food, he will give you food again. So it is pitiful for someone to work for money in a Christian work when the money is very little. Here he is talking about people who will be like, what have they given me? Have they given me anything? I don't get any allowance. Should I give someone? He also goes on to say, if people come and they sit on your sofa and they wear them out, you should not mind knowing that God is going to give you more. Third kind of givers. These are called, uh, you know, these flint kind of givers, some of them don't worry about them. It's because of their background. They grew up After preaching like this, a flint kind of a giver, they don't hear the word. It doesn't penetrate a flint. But the Bible says, don't you know that my word is like a hammer? Now, the third kind of givers, these are called honeycomb. Honeycomb. That one which drips with the honey. We want the believers who, are, who fall under the honeycomb givers. Honeycomb givers, they give with understanding whom they are giving. Mm -hmm. They give understanding that... Right. Apostle Kapandura said, some of you, you are not givers because you know you are not going to heaven. <laughs> so you can't send your treasure where you are not going. It's true. How can you send your treasure where you are not going? How can I send my treasure right now to Thailand? I'm not going there. How can I, can I send my car? Ah, imagine, Michelle. Sending him uh, to Thailand. You saw in the place where you are going. You know, when you are sowing in the kingdom of God, it's different from in the world. Right now, if you go and buy McDonald's, it's gone. You eat, it goes out. Before you even go to sleep, it's out there. Now, those that give in the kingdom of God, they are actually sowing. What you sow, you shall reap. You cannot reap perhaps tomorrow, but one day you are going to reap because God is faithful. Amen. If you give to God, God will make sure that he will bless you in abundance. I just need to be faithful. So as we are talking about the first of March being our big day, we should come giving knowing whom we are giving. If you come giving to a church, you are going to, be, you are going to, 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 to cry and have this, uh, uh, sores in the heart. Because when you give to a church, uh, we will clap for you and say, oh, God bless you, God bless you, and that's it. But when you give to God, God will bless you. It is him that you have... To. I'm, I'm reminded of a story whereby there are some people who... who uh, there's someone who went to Baba and he said, Baba, I was giving a car. I have been giving a car for all along. I gave a car. And Baba said, uh, this guy said, I gave a car and nothing happened. I did not receive my car back. <laughs> and Baba Guti said... Who told you to give that car? Who told you? If it's God, then God is going to bless you. If God speaks, I need to just to be obedient. 
You know, God can speak and say, your 200 that you are left with, I want you to give it to me. I'm reminded in the book of Psalms, the Bible says, they that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Sowing in tears, you can give all that you have today. And when you are going back, you'll be like, oh God, I'm left with the money for just this week, but I believe that next week you are going to provide. And God is faithful. God is faithful. Now as I conclude, who wants to read something? Who wants to come? Who wants to be on the mic? Shall we be on our feet? We want to be on our feet. I want you to preach. Preach that way. According to my calling, people must grow. According to my calling, people must grow. Move forward and prosper. How do they prosper? I am not allowed to lead people who don't prosper. Baba is saying, I am not allowed to lead people who do not prosper. I am not allowed by God who sent me to lead people who do not prosper. How do they prosper? You prosper by giving tithes. Read again that part. You prosper by giving tithes. You prosper by giving tithes. When you are a child of God, especially in this ministry, where we teach such a teaching of the word of God, Baba is saying, I was called by God to lead the people who move forward, to lead the people who grow and who prosper. You prosper by paying your tithes. You prosper by giving your tithes. Baba Gwiti goes on to say, when you don't give proper tithes, you know, there's a difference. Just giving a tithe of the church. <laughs> when you don't give proper tithes, you are deceiving and delaying yourself. That means you are lying to yourself and you are delaying to yourself. I was talking to my wife and I was like, ha, ah, some people, how come God is not doing anything? We have seen them giving, but how come? You know, if my tithe is 101, I need to make sure I give that 101. I need to make sure. I need to make sure. Recently, uh, 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 I, 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 God blessed me with something and there was a, a, a coma there on my tithe, which means I needed to bring a, some, some coins. And I said to myself, no, no, no. Why, how, why can't I round it up? Why can't I round it up <laughs> and say, ah, I know it's comma, comma two, or comma three, or comma four, five, six. <laughs> Some they round to the three decimal. How come I can, I can just round it up so that I am not found lacking? I don't want to be found lacking. It's better to give more <laughs> than to give less. Because if I give less, it's no longer a type. Now we want to go before the Lord. Some of us, we need to repent and say, God, from today, I need to give my offering with the right motive. And I need to pay my tithes fully. Hallelujah. Shall we go before the Lord and pray? And say, Father, I have been paying, I have been stealing and robbing. But I, I, I ask you to forgive me. Starting from today, I want to be faithful. Shall we go before the Lord and pray? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor your name. We honor your name. We honor your name. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us for all that we have done. In the name of Online services. Oh, my God. I thank God for that online service. They are so powerful in reach with the word of God. Like, you are during the week, some things come in your way, like trials, temptations. But when you turn on those live services, you're just like, God, where have you been? They are so equipped with the word of God. So I just want to encourage someone that tune in whenever you can, even when you are led to tune in. There are blessings from God to turn your week into something amazing.